technically I've been mm, producing uh, probably since like the uh, early 90s. So technically, I'm gonna say technically a lot. Uh, <laughs> My first, my first little uh, technical record is uh, a production with me and Mad Lib, but he wasn't called Mad Lib at the time, and uh, it was a group called No Good Hoods. But see, the thing is, is uh, now people know about it being Mad Lib's quote unquote first record. They got it all twisted, and they're saying it's Hoods to No Good because of the artwork. The artwork looks like it says Hoods to No Good, but it's No Good Hoods. And so that's our first record. He, he produced the majority of the record, and I did a remix. So that's our first professional record in real talk. It's like uh, really, really rare to get. I just came up on a copy for like $9 on eBay. And no one, hey, I looked up No Good Hoods, and it came up. So all you suckers want to get that vinyl, Mad Lib's first vinyl, you got heavy searching for that. I got three copies. What up? Yes. First demo, 91. Uh, I wasn't really working on music like that. I was hanging out with them, and uh, I was rhyming more. And uh, I was hanging hardcore with Loop Pack. It was Loop Pack and Farm hanging all the time, like literally. It was before any thoughts of like really getting it popping. Just we're just thinking, you know, pop it local, LA, wherever we needed to. So they did a demo. Um, there was a posse cut called Up for Grabs, and. Um, they asked me to be on it. On the song was uh, Mad Lib, Wild Child. Both of them weren't called Mad Lib and Wild Child back then. They both had different names, and if they ain't told you what they are, I don't know what to tell you. I ain't gonna put them on blast. They might, they might put my old name on blast, but nah. So they um they invited me. It was them two. It was my man uh, Inverse, rest in peace. Who is basically go ahead and do your thing. Inverse is basically Mad Lib's cousin. So it was Mad Lib's cousin, Mad Lib, Wild Child. Um, Ono, a young Ono was on the track, and he had a different name at that time, and I ain't gonna say it. Um, <laughs> but he was 15, so it was like a posse cut, and I was on the track. And, the demo got around. This is how they hooked up with alcoholics. They got the demo to, uh, I, I guess, like Wild Child pieced up with uh, Tash from the alcoholics. I don't know how. I didn't really know about all of that until, like, the demo started circulating. Next thing you know, everyone is like, Loop Pack demo, Loop Pack demo. Like, alcoholics and all the cats down with that. Man, it's Loop Pack. You know, Otis, man, he got these beats, you know. So the demo got into the hands of King T. King T, I think, played at the DJ Pooh, which is the OG. Respect to the DJ Pooh and King T. The OGs, don't, don't get it twisted. Um, they heard me rap. Well, basically, DJ Pooh heard me rap the verse on that song, and they basically like, who is that guy? And they were like, oh, it's the homie Can Kick. And somehow he was like, yeah, y'all should have him either rap on tracks more or something like that. <laughs> and so, you know, we were already kicking it. So when they asked me to get in the group, I don't even know how I went. We were already crew, so it was natural. All the way from the Ops, London, walk one, walk one. One of the tracks on the first demo, Beat, is on the first Alcoholics record. The track that Loop Pack raps on with the licks, that was originally a Loop Pack song. Like I said, we did one track on the first Alcoholics record called Mary Jane. There's two beats on that record. One Mad Lib. The second one is me and Mad Lib, Mary Jane track. So everything was good. We tried to shop a demo with Loud. I was in the group. 
just didn't really like how I fit, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they were down with what I did. They liked the abstract shit. You know, my voice is all high-pitched and shit, you know? It was coming with a different flavor. But I just felt like they already had something going, you know what I'm saying? They're, if you heard the demo, you would know what I'm talking about. That lost tape shit, it's funny. Nobody wanted that out. No one wanted that shit out. And I'll say it first if ain't no one else said it. Nobody wanted that shit out. Oh, yeah. So when it came to that, yeah. Cause now motherfuckers making fun of my verse and shit. I see it. You know <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna tell you about that verse. The pure affection for the weird lap staff. Um, I, 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 I was in the studio. And I'm gonna drop jewels. The studio session was righteous, but the vibes were weird, and I couldn't really record how I would want to because there was people over our shoulders and shit, you know, kind of like babying us. Because we were like 19, you know, 20 at the time, trying to tell us how to be a group and whatnot, you know. And it's like, let us do what we do. So I decided to leave after after that session. I just didn't feel it. I left, I left. No, no kicked out, no nothing. I just decided to leave. And and then, you know, decided to work on what all the cats that I was down with, which were a bunch of cats, you know, I called the farm. And it was a collective of dudes that were nice on the freestyle. They, 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 every now and then they would have some songs, but nothing was focused. Let's put it like that. So from, I'm getting to the point from the loop pack to doing my own thing. I pieced up with Babu. Um, around 95 through my man E-Dog, rest in peace. He brought him through, like, yo, it's my man Babu, he's gonna be my DJ. This is before anything, <laughs> championships or any of that shit. And you know, I was like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, I didn't diss or nothing. Brought him through, he was kind of square, kind of squarish. <laughs> Kind of squarish. Babs will tell you, you know what I'm saying? He can probably tell you things about me. I'm square too, but you know, yeah, everyone's square well. But he took his square squareness to the next level because he hung out with the right cats and like, you know, he already knew the time on hip hop, but we just kind of shaped and mold him to a certain degree to where he could just go off and do his own thing, you know. You know, he tried, but probably tells it like I, I helped him out to a certain degree. Not really even with the beats, but just helping him out. Like, there's times that I lent him crates of records. Like, when I knew he started to get on beats, he was working with a Mirage and Sonic Mirage, which has no sequencer. So he was trying to, you know, he was making beats without a sequencer. And when I heard the beats, I was amazed and shit. And I was like, well, here, homie. Here's a crate of records, homie. Just as long as I get them back. Do your thing. And so... You get back? Yeah. <laughs> if, you listen, if, you listen, yeah. if you listen to um, the comprehension tape, that's what I'm leading to. From after leaving loop, leaving loop pack, in a sense, I never really left. Just moved the uh, away. Got down with Babs. We did a comprehension little mixtape, which had some more, like, B-side was my stuff, A-side was uh, his stuff. That kind of, like, took on a life of its own for being a mixtape, and it kind of propelled Babs to another level, and it kind of helped me out, too. So from there, uh, I'm just doing farm demos, man. You can ask me anything else, because it's basically, yeah, yeah. there's periods of times where I wasn't really doing professional stuff. Yeah. I started to get back into it, like, in, in 99, 2000, my first kind of stuff was with D-Claim. Yeah, he yeah. kind of brought me back into the fold, you know. He came around and was like, I need some beats. You know, because we weren't, like, like like I said, when I left Loop Pack. I'm sorry, it said stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I left Loop Pack, you know, so cra some cats went this way, some cats went that way. And it was kind of weird and shit. So D-Claim didn't really hang out. But then, you know, we all started hanging again. That's the first time I, I yeah. heard your stuff, man. I well, was like, well what? he gave me that shot. Yeah. D-Claim gave me that shot. Shot. Pick up. It was right around the time after, and so it was said. Album, and so it is said, or whatever it's called. Shit, <laughs> whatever the album's called. It was right after that. I'm staying in Vegas, you know, and I had to leave the Ox, so I went with an EPS 16. No, EPS. Not the 16 or 16 plus, just the EPS. It has no effects. I went one keyboard and one crate of records, and I went to to Vegas and. I just tried to do the most with them crates and records, and I had drum programs, you know, so I would, yeah, yeah, and then, hey, but real talk, we did it, it was so quick, I kind of liked it, the mix sounded aight, but then we turned it in, and some months went by, and I was thinking like, oh, that ain't gonna come out, and I'm glad it ain't gonna come out, because I, 
you know, Dudley will like stuff and he will be right on it. Like, you know, I'll listen to it, that's cool, but but Batman was cool. It's underground shit, you know what I'm saying? It, he had the cat poppy, he was in the area. You asked D. Crane. I don't even know. He's probably in Vegas or something, but well, I was trying to work with him after that and um just communication was just yeah. weird. But I know he probably pieces with D. Crane. But shout out to Poppy wherever he's at, you know. You know, because he's a part of that. You know, it was basically him. Look at this like this. D. Crane. Um, said, yo, Ken, this is my man Poppy, he's dope. And just like, rap on his beats. I didn't know this dude from anything. But then when I heard him spit, I was like, oh, okay. So the stuff that I used to listen to was like, you know, earlier Sugar Hill Gang records and all, you know, the basic shit yeah, yeah. kind of influenced me back then. But, then. but then then there was the Teela Rocks, Teela Rock, Lyrical King from the Boogie Down Bronx album, Mantronics, uh, Masters of Ceremony, Grand Pooba, Ultra Magnetic MCs, um, Tough Crew from Philly. I mean, we can go on and yeah, on, that's man. <laughs> <laughs> brought a couple of, um, I don't want to say exclusive, but just different cats that I'm down with, you know. I brought I brought one Mad Lib beat from a beat CD that I was like, man, I got to rock this. I don't know if anyone heard it, but it's like a beat that I just like, ah, I just got to knock it, you know. Just, just a little bit of everything, grooves and stuff, you know. I'm just keeping it basic because, like, to prepare to bring the crazy shit out, that takes time. So I, I was I was pushed for time, like, to get out here, to prepare. But I made sure I came correct, so, you know, it's all good. Mad influences, dog, from yeah, Gangstar, yeah. Guru, Rest in Peace, you know. Cool Keith, bug out shit, you know, Godfather Don, you know, lyrical cats. My family ain't mixed, no, I got no rich people. And I associate wealthy folks with local evil and greed. Happiness and wealth is not equal. I still be eating waffles up in Roscoe's on Pico with butter. And kicking with niggas is like brothers, not because they got big names like Fat Man Brothers. I'm kicking with niggas, I'm like trouble behavior. One man's trash is another man's savior. I'm kicking someone. So this performance will be defined now because you get the shiny. Yeah, you know what? Let me tell you something. I had to put my hand on many a security guard. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I ain't bullshitting. This ain't trying to be tough, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ask the cats in the auction, know me when I was wilding out. <laughs> you know, fuck how tall a bouncer is. I bounce him the fuck over around this fucking street. <laughs> That nigga too. <laughs> it's, all, it's all up. I had to get wild on cats with their power trip shit. Any deal with my and low profiling, all the while. And when they come for fashion, it ain't price for style. Cause any fool with Luke could buy the same suit. They're not the top the top for every cheap shit. Then all the ghetto babies can afford once they keep it. You see, it ain't about blue. A true Mac could Mac butt naked. To all my real brothers never make it. I never seen Twister. I like to get Twister brother and then the